Chances are, if you play old school RuneScape, you probably use RuneLite. And if not, you've definitely heard of it, as about 70% of players online right now are on RuneLite. Now, as a Twitch streamer, I get asked every single day, Mammal, how do you set that plugin up? How do you get your RuneLite to look like this? And I figured, if I'm getting asked these questions on stream every single day, Chances are, there probably are people that could benefit from this information on YouTube as well, so I'm gonna make a video. Now, first and foremost, uh, there are a lot of fake RuneLite links if you just Google RuneLite, so I am going to put a link to the RuneLite website in the description of the video in the event that you don't have RuneLite already. It is RuneLite.net. Please be very careful because people get hacked like this all the time. So the first thing I want to talk about technically doesn't have to do with RuneLite specifically, but I think that this is really underknown at this point, and it's a shame. And that is the Jagex launcher. Now I'm not I'm not being like paid by Jagex. I just think this is really really cool. So with the Jagex launcher, you can one-click log in the same way that you do on mobile. If you played OSRS mobile before, you would know all you got to do is is tap play now. Well, with the Jagex launcher, you can do the same thing and use RuneLite. One click, play now, you're in the game. Once again, I will put a link in the description to the Jagex launcher download. It's on the jagex.com website. Once you've downloaded the Jagex launcher, you can actually use either RuneScape 3 or Old School RuneScape. From there, you're going to click on Manage Accounts, and you can add every single one of your accounts by logging in. Once you've done that, it's going to show a list of all of your accounts, and then you're just going to click on RuneLite or Official Client if you want, uh, but obviously I'm using RuneLite, and then you click on Play, and it will launch a client. Once that client has finished launch launching, that's it. You're done. All you got to do is click Login. No need to type your password again. It's, it's a game changer. Now, some of these features I tell you about, in fact, a lot of them are going to be on the plugin hub. I wanted to quickly explain the plugin hub contains tons and tons of plugins that are not default to RuneLite. Uh, they were created by players. Now, RuneLite verifies that everything on the plugin hub is safe to use. Like, you're not going to get hacked, you're not going to get banned from the game by using it. However, the only thing they don't verify is it could cause, like, instability, could cause your client to crash, maybe, or something. But all of these are totally within the rules. Now, in order to get to the plugin hub, you're going to click on this little... Uh, well, I, I guess it's a plugin, isn't it? You're going to click on this button in the top right-hand part of RuneLite, and from there, you can type in uh, whatever it is you want and find it. So, if I say it's on the plugin hub, just click on this tab right here and then type it in. If it's not on the plugin hub, then it'll be under this wrench icon under the default plugins. The first plugin I want to show you, and probably the one I get asked about the most, is Bank Tag Layouts. To set up Bank Tag Layouts, you're going to find it in the plugin hub, and from there, open up the settings. And the, really, the only important thing you need is on this section that says Auto Layout, uh, you want to set your Auto Layout Style to Presets. Zigzag will not do what I'm going to show you, you want it to say Presets. Once you've done that, you're going to open up your bank, and in the top left-hand corner of your bank, you're going to see a plus. It says New Tag Tab. So, for the purpose of this, I'm going to do, we'll just call it Slayer, okay? And when you make a tab, it'll appear at the bottom of this list on the left-hand side of your, uh, your bank. So, with this little spade icon, this is the tab that I just created. Once you've done that, you're going to click on these two white arrows, Preview Auto Layout, click on the green check and there you go you just made a bank tab and it's got your gear and your inventory laid out exactly as they are separated really easy to work with and take out i think this next one is really underknown and will be helpful for a lot of people so on the plugin hub there is a plugin called tile packs once you've installed tile packs you're gonna see an icon on the far right hand side of your room light Open that up, and you are going to see a massive list of bosses. Tile markers are used in a lot of ways to help make bossing easier. Now, if you ever watched a YouTube guide that, you know, uses tile markers, I know when I used to watch guides, I'd be squinting, trying to copy what tiles they have marked 
with the tile packs plugin you don't need that you don't have to do that anymore so if i'm at bandos right now and i wanted to do the six zero range method with a crossbow there's a little thing that says general grador six zero five tick click on the plus and looky there all of your tile markers just got imported no need to try and copy them from a guide and there are so many bosses listed here Tile packs is a big one if you're getting into PVMing and you need help getting your tiles marked. Have you ever scouted a raid and a bunch of the rooms are unknown? Well, you can fix that. This next one is called Raid Reloader. It's located on the plugin hub, and once you add Raid Reloader, on the far right side of Runelight, you're going to see a little refresh arrow. Click on that, and all you're going to get is a Reload Raid button. So do you see how it says Tecton and the rest unknown? If I stand on the correct tile and click Reload Raid, it should now tell me what everything is. Yep, there you go. Now, here's the tricky part, okay? The raid reloader only works on certain raids, and you have to be standing in the correct spot. Uh, so if the room, the lobby, looks like this, you need to stand on this tile right here, right behind this big purple flower. And then the other reloadable layout is this one. If your lobby looks like this, where it's nice and long, you need to stand right here, as far north as you can go next to the entrance of the raid. Click on reload, and it should work. Um, again, there are a f there's a few layouts with some unknowns that you're not going to be able to reload, but as long as you stand in that right spot most of the time, the reloader will work. Be careful though, sometimes this one will disconnect you. You'll click on reload, and then it'll just log you out of the game. I don't know why it happens, but just be aware that it does sometimes. So, this next one is pretty advanced, and I'm just going to show you an example of how I used it at Commander Zilliana. It's called the Custom Menu Swaps, and it's located on the plugin hub. Now, I think you could probably do some pretty crazy stuff with this. Uh, I can't take credit for it. My chat told me how to do this so all i can do is pass forward this example so if under custom swaps what i have copy and pasted here it's attack comma commander zilliana and then asterisk comma attack comma starlight asterisk i would assume you could swap commander zilliana and starlight with any other npcs in the game you wanted to and it should work the same way but what this will do this will make it so that I will always have left-click priority on Zilliana. Commander Zilliana and Starlight will frequently stack on top of each other, and what you would normally have to do is right-click and then click attack on Zilliana. But with this custom swap, I am always able to left-click Zilliana. It'll always take priority. And again, I would assume you could swap out any NPC in place of those two, and it should work the same. Right, so let's show it in live action. As you can see, even though Starlight is standing on top of Zilliana, I can still left-click and it'll always shoot Zilliana. I'll have to wait a moment for them to get realigned so I can show you again. Uh, like I said, under normal circumstances, you would have to go right-click, left-click, attack Zilliana, but I will always be able to left-click and it'll always hit Zilliana. I'll even try to click on Starlight. Like, I, I'm going to go out of my way to click on the unicorn, and it's just not going to matter. It's always going to left-click on Zilliana. I would consider the next plugin a must-have for a lot of PVM in this game, and that is NPC Indicators. NPC Indicators is a default Runelight plugin, and there's a lot of different settings to play with here, but I think the most important thing is having the tile highlighted. If you have the tile highlighted, that can be very vital information for a lot of bosses, such as the Corrupted Hunlef. It's really important to know exactly what tiles the Hunlef is occupying, because now I know where I can safely run. Otherwise, you could risk running underneath it and getting stomped. Now, this can apply to a lot of bosses and a lot of activities. The Hunlef is just an easy and clear example to show you. But NPC indicators isn't just useful for bossing, you can also use it for Slayer. So if I'm doing, let's say, a Gargoyle Slayer task right now, what you can do is you can highlight these Gargoyles and check a box that says Show Respawn Timer. If you have that box checked, whenever you kill a monster, it is going to show exactly where it's going to respawn and when. So now that I just killed that Gargoyle, you can see the tiles it's going to spawn on, and there's a little timer in the middle showing exactly when it's going to spawn. This can be useful information to know if you should move on to a different monster, or if you could just wait for the one next to you to respawn.
This next one is massive quality of life, and it is called Logout Timer. Logout Timer is a default rune light plugin, and if you open up the settings, you can change your idle timeout to up to 25 minutes. That means you can do absolutely nothing in AFK for 25 minutes before being logged out. The only problem is, is the number doesn't go higher than 25 minutes, sadly. So this one actually isn't a plugin, but I think it's great general rune light knowledge to have. If you didn't know, you can reorder what the left click option of an item in your inventory is. So right now, obviously the left click option for these bracelets is where. However, if I wanted to dismantle a bunch of these bracelets, I'd have to right click, dismantle, and then hit yes. Well, there's a faster way that I could do it, and this is a good way to show you how useful this can be. So if you hold down the shift key and right click an item in your inventory, you can swap what the left click option is. So I'm going to swap the left click option on these bracelets to dismantle. Now, if I left click, it's going to dismantle as the left click option, so I can just hold down the one key and spam click these bracelets. That's obviously a specific example, but just know that you can swap the left click of any item you want to whatever options they have, and the sky's the limit, really. As an Iron Man, this is one of my favorite plugins I've used over the years, and it is called Banked Experience. There's a few different variants of this one, but I guess I've always used this one. It's got a blue logo with uh, gold text. Once you add Banked Experience from the plugin hub, you'll see an icon on the far right-hand side of Runelight. If you click on that, what you are going to see is a drop-down menu with lots of different skills, and it's going to tell you exactly how much XP you have banked in that skill. And it's very customizable. So if I click on this molten glass right here you can tell it what you are going to be blowing with that molten glass so it can accurately tell you how much xp you're going to get and then you can see it says total banked i've got well if i put this on there 24 million xp banked this can save you a lot of time with your calculator trying to figure it out yourself Oh, and while I've got it open, if you're an Iron Man and you're trying to calculate how much Molten Glass you need, make sure you get this right. If you click on Giant Seaweed, make sure you set to Super Glass Make 18-3 to Pickup, assuming that's what you're going to do. If you have this set to, like, Normal Soda Ash, the amount of XP it's going to tell you you have is way, way less. So if you're using the Super Glass Make spell to make Molten Glass, make sure you select SGM, which is Super Glass Make, because that'll actually tell you it correctly. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to make your screen flash to let you know that you've gone AFK. This can be really useful if you're doing something like woodcutting and you're not paying attention. It's not exactly straightforward, so there's two things you have to do here. First of all, you're going to turn on Idle Notifier. Idle Notifier is a default Moonlight plugin. If you go in the settings, you can uh, customize exactly how long you have to be idle before it'll start letting you know. So I'm going to set it to uh, 50 milliseconds will be fine, okay? So I've got that set up however you want it to be. Now, that is not going to be enough. If you stop there, it's not going to work. From there, you have to type in rune light and go into the actual client settings themselves. And what's important is you go under notification settings and you select flash and then I would do flash until cancelled. If you want, you can even go further than that. You can have it tray notifications turned on, which will give you a little notification in the bottom right of Windows. You can even turn notification sounds on if you really don't want AFK. Now, once you've got flash turned on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start woodcutting. Now, as soon as I stop woodcutting and I go idle for at least 50 milliseconds, like I set it to, my screen will start flashing red. Alright, so as you can see, I've stopped woodcutting and now my screen is flashing red. This can also come in handy because if you take a look again on the idle notifier, you can also- Okay, yeah, yeah, stop flashing. You can also- <laughs> You can also have it uh, notify you when your hit points has dropped below a certain, a certain threshold, for example. So a good example of that is if you're AFKing at- I don't know, insert Slayer monster, and you're not paying attention, if you're getting too close to death, well, you can let yourself know. Here's one that I get asked about all the time. As you can see, I've got an easy clue scroll in my inventory, and it's got a little blue W by it. Now, I wish the W stood for Wumbo. Sadly, it doesn't. It stands for Watson. With the Watson Clue Tracker plugin, it will let you know whether or not the clue scroll that you're holding is already being stored by Watson or not. This comes in handy if you do a lot of master clues like I do, and you can't remember. 
Does Watson have a hard clue for me already? I don't remember. Well, this will let you know. This one is a bit specific, but if it saves somebody a bunch of time, then I'm happy to put it in the guide. This one is called the Corend Library Plugin. The Corend Library is a default Rune Life plugin. Once you turn it on, you're going to see a little pink book icon on the far right hand side of Rune Light. If you open that up, it's going to have all the books and scrolls of the library listed, but it's going to say unknown. In order to change it from unknown, what you're going to have to do is find a book. So start searching the book shelves under these white squares until you find a book. Once you do, it's going to narrow it down a little bit, but it still won't know exactly. So find a few more books, and once you've done that, it'll give you all it'll have all the information it needs to know exactly which algorithm you're on. So I think the next book I find which should be here uh, once I find this one, yeah, now it knows exactly where every single book is. So, when you're getting your Archaeus favor and the guy says, I need you to find me, Soul Journey. You can look at this and say, okay, that's Northwest Middle Floor. It makes the Core End Library so fast and easy. If you're not the brightest fellow like me and you don't know how to play Sudoku, this one is a lifesaver. After you complete the feud quest, you are able to purchase runes from Ali Morrisane. The problem is, in order to see his full stock of runes, you have to complete a Sudoku puzzle. With the Rune Doku Helper plugin, it will tell you exactly what to do. So on the left hand side, you're going to see these runes. It will highlight where you need to place them, each and every single rune. So simply click on a rune, and then just click on all the green highlighted boxes move on to the next rune, so on and so forth. And once you have clicked on all of the highlighted boxes, you open casket. And that's it! That's all you gotta do! If you are forgetful like me, there's a plugin on the plugin hub called Thrall Helper that is a lifesaver. If you're doing a piece of content where you're constantly using thralls, the Thrall Helper will let you know as soon as your thrall has expired, you need to summon a thrall. Without this, I'm not even sure that I would ever have a Thrall summoned, I just always forget. If you plan on spending any time in the wilderness taking on the new bosses, I would consider this a must-have. Wilderness Multi Lines is on the plugin hub and it will literally draw a line on where is multi and where is not. Now I guess technically there isn't a way of knowing like which side of the multi line you're on, except for checking. Obviously I'm not in multi right now. I cross over this line and there's a little multi symbol. Uh, there is another thing you can turn on as well called show spear lines. If you check that box, it will show you which is a, a safe tile to stand on to get de-speared and not. If I cross over this line, I could get de-spear spec all the way over into multi. So if you're planning on doing stuff in the wilderness and you don't want to get de-speared or pushed into multi and smited, this is a good one to have. And last but not least, you know I had to end on a fun one. If you go to the plugin hub, you will find the Fashionscape plugin. Once you've added Fashionscape, you're going to see a logo on the right-hand side. I don't even know what it is. A dummy, maybe? This, I'm telling you, is the most addicting plugin. I play around with this so much. So, you can either specifically set items what you want. Now, of course, you're not actually wearing these items. It is simply a cosmetic overlay. Uh, you can individually select all the items you want. So, if I wanted to wear a... Stadius plate body? Well, I, it looks like I'm wearing a Stadius plate body. Uh, the best thing to me, though, is the randomizer. So, if you click on the little dice button towards the top, it will select a random outfit for you. And I swear to you, I have sat here for like 20 minutes straight once, just clicking. Just, just, just watching to see what I get, because it, <laughs> it's so entertaining, honestly. Um, as far as like practical uses go, I mean, I've used this to make thumbnails before, like, you know, right now, I'm in the wilderness, but I'm not actually wearing this, it just looks like I am, and if I'm doing something like a thumbnail, what's the difference, it doesn't, you know what I mean? So, uh, this one is a lot of fun to play around with, obviously not actually useful, but, I, like I said, man, I've sat here for like 20 minutes one day, just clicking the button, seeing what I got. Uh, bro. <laughs> On that note, I think I am going to uh, call it a video. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. I just know that 
you know, while I'm live on Twitch, I get asked constantly, how do you get this plugin? How do you set that up? And so I just figured this has got to be helpful to somebody, right? Surely. If you guys did enjoy today's video, feel free to leave a like and I will see you all soon.